Welcome back to the vlog. Um, I've been on quite a winning streak. In fact, I went 15 sessions without a loss. And I was going to show you like session number 14 and session number 15, but I know what you really want to see. You want to see the blood. Yes. So this is the end of my win streak and it ended with bad play and some bad luck. Mostly bad play. Anyway, sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. All right, we're in the game for $500. Been playing for about 30 minutes. Nothing too exciting happened. There's a bunch of limpers on this hand, and the player on the button raises to 20. Small blind calls for the 20. And with $55 worth of dead money in there, I decided to put on a big squeeze. I figure I can get most of those hands to fold out. I would use the same sizing with hands like Ace King, Ace Queen, Pocket Jacks, and above. So I feel this looks very legit. Everyone seems to be folding out until it gets to the player on the button, who's the player I'm worried about the most. He ends up folding, take a little sigh of relief, and then the small blind decides to shove for his $160 remaining. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I got a call. I got 7-8 suited in a dream. Flop comes out all spades. Looks like we're in deep trouble. We brick out. Our opponent shows two red deuces. So a little uh, salt in the wound. We were a favorite on the hand. So when things are going your way, everybody folds. And if you do get called, you happen to win a flip. Not today. There was a $6 straddle on this hand and I decided to raise to 25 with ace queen from the low jack. It's folded back around to the player in the big blind who puts in a raise to 75. It's folded back to me and I have to say, I hate this already. It seems like whenever someone plays back at me like this and I have ace queen, they always have either kings or ace king. I make the crying call and the flop comes king nine nine. Not a good flop. My opponent thinks for a moment and then checks. I imagine he has either ace king or pocket king, so I check back. Turn card comes, he makes a small bet. I don't think too long before letting it go, and he flashes that he had pocket kings. All right, it's been about an hour and a half, down 160 bucks, but I found two aces on the button, and I do raise to 25. I do get a call from one player from the plus one position. He has about a stack about the same size as mine. Flop comes out king, queen, nine, two hearts. Not the greatest flop in the world. There are straights and flushes and all sorts of type of draws out there. But when he checks to me, I feel pretty confident betting $35. He puts in the quick call. Turn card comes as a four of spades. Here, sometimes I would check back for like pot control, but I really want to charge draws and I don't want to make a small bet. So I decided to go for a larger sizing here just to try to put the pressure on all those possible drawing hands, like maybe a queen jack of hearts type of hand. So I bet 115. And my opponent is not faced by that. He decides to put in the call for the 115. So at this point, my plan should be just check back if he checks to me, unless I catch the perfect card. The seven of spades is not the perfect card. He checks again, and I just decide to jam, which is a really bad bet, because what am I really targeting here? A king with a jack? Anyway, he doesn't think too long before putting in the call and showing me king queen. I don't mind the large turn bet. I think that charges all the possible draws as much as possible. But the river bet's just just awful. I mean, I'm only targeting like king jack and what do you call a big bet with king jack on the river? He either has a busted draw or he has me beat. So I really don't like my my river bet. It was like $150, $160, and it was just a punt. And I was like tilted by my bad bet, not by losing with aces. Well, after that aces hand, I am pretty tilted. I hate the way I played it. Here I opened up in the plus one position to 15 with eight, seven suited. 
usually something that I do occasionally, but not very frequently. Of course, I get plenty of action until it gets to the player in the big blind who puts in a bet to $100. Yeah, there's 176 in the middle. I am hot and I am stuck. And I decided I'm going to just play this hand. Really, really bad choice. I mean, this is an easy fold. But as I said, my nose is wide open at this point, And I definitely want to want to get revenge. Not only with the aces, but I also lost the other hand with 8-7 suited. So I figure maybe the 8-7 owes me something. We do get one other caller from the small blind. So we're going to go three ways to this flop with 346 in the pot. I'm really thinking the person who put in the big raise either has a big pair or ace king, ace queen type of hand and is squeezing because he, he got caught a couple times squeezing earlier. Anyway, flop comes 10 high. I flop a pair. I told myself if he jams and I have a pair, I'm going to have to call off if no cards are bigger than a jack. So he, de he jams. I'm not getting the right price, probably. But then again, he could be doing this with ace-king or ace-queen just as well with aces. And even if he has aces, I have almost 25% equity in this hand with my pair and my backdoor straight draw. Run out comes with a jack and a 10, and yeah, he shows me aces. And yes, I just punted off about $500. So I told myself, okay, there goes your bad plays for the day. Let's uh, get some chips and... Start grinding it back, one hand at a time. So I buy a thousand in chips. So I'm in a total of two thousand dollars at this point, and I'm in the low jack. And there's two tens, and a player opens for a raise, and I just decided to call. The player behind me calls, and so does this small blind. So we go four ways to this flop, and it comes out five three seven with two diamonds. The first two players check. I decide to bet forty dollars. You really need to protect my tens. I don't have a diamond, so there's possible flush draws out there too. And the player behind me uh, puts in the call. I'm not too concerned with him. I think he's probably doing this with a lot of different hands. He probably thinks I'm still tilted and uh, maybe taking a stab. Now the player on the small blind, he hesitates for a while and then puts in the call. And his hesitation has me scared out of my mind. Turn card comes is a queen of spades. And now he just opened jams for about $200. I think he flopped a monster and was just waiting for no diamond to show up. So I just got to get out of the way. And uh, maybe I should have three bet that thing pre-flop. All right, we open under the gun with ace 10 offsuit. 15, get called in a couple spots. So we're gonna go three ways to this flop with 49 in. Flop comes out king three eight with two hearts. So someone doesn't have a king or a flush draw, that probably won't get any action from him. I lead for 20. First player thinks for a second and then ends up folding. Player on the button puts in the quick call. So likely he has a king or a heart draw. Turn card comes as a king of clubs, so it's less likely he has a king and more likely he has a flush draw. I bet small for $20, seeing what he would do, he puts in the call. So I'm really thinking he's more on the flush draw and the river card comes as a complete brick. Time for me to check, wave the white flag and see if he'll try to take it away. He doesn't think long at all before deciding to bet $80 into this pot. Really don't think he has a king. I really think he has a busted flush draw. So this is a fairly easy call on my part. I put in the chips and he mucks. All right, this is a limp pot. I'm in the small blind with jack nine of clubs. I limp along also. $15 in the pot and the flop comes jack jack five. Pretty darn good. I check. Player bets for $5 in the middle position. Player in the cutoff calls and I decided, okay, just take it down here, put in a check raise to 25. Now the big blind, who also checked, decides to put in the cold call for the 25. Has some alarm bells going off. The other player also calls. Turn card comes as a four hearts. Pretty good card, doesn't make anything that wasn't there already. So 
I decided to bet for $75, denying equity to all flush draws. Player in the big blind puts in the call again. I'm not sure what he has, but it feels like a monster at this point. The other player folds out and we see a river card of a six of diamonds. Definitely a card I would be checking and I do check it. And he doesn't think long before putting out a value E size bet of $115. I, I'm trying to think what hand I can beat and I can't think of anything basically, unless it's just a stone cold bluff. Does he have jack five, jack four, pocket fives, ace jack, king jack, diamonds, straights? Who knows? But I don't think I'm good here. So I just have to let it go. And uh, I guess I'll never know the truth. There's one limp in front of us. We look down at ace queen suited, raised to 15. End up getting four callers to the 15. A player two to my left, player on the button, the small blind, and the original limper. So five ways to this flop with $78 in the pot. Flop comes out queen four deuce with two clubs. So we got top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. Can't ask for much more. Players check to me, I bet out for 30. Hopefully I'll get some action and I do get a call from the player on the button. The other players end up folding out. So we're heads up now to a turn and I got the world. So hopefully my opponent's calling with a hand like a queen or something. Turn card comes as a nine of spades. Excellent card for my hand. Definitely going to be betting this. Decided to go for about half pot so I make it $70. My opponent doesn't think too long before releasing his hand and we actually win a pot. Still haven't made a flush draw all day long. There's a couple limpers in front of me so I decided to limp along with Jack 8 of diamonds from the low jack. So we're going to end up going to this flop five ways. Flop comes out king five deuce with two diamonds. So we flop a flush draw, it gets checked to me and I decide to check it. Player behind me bets 15. Everyone else folds out. And here I decided I'm going to go ahead and see if I can actually hit a flush today. So I put in a call for 15 and we see a turn card of a four of hearts. I check again. My opponent again leads out this time for $25. I'm thinking chances of me making a flush are pretty slim. But I hate folding, especially when I'm stuck. So why don't we put some pressure on? I make it $100. My goal here is simple. I'm trying to get the person to fold a king, maybe with a mediocre kicker. And since they didn't raise, I don't think they have anything too much stronger than that. But they decided to put in the call for the extra $75. So now it's time to make a flush. Let's see if we can do it. Here it comes. And there it goes. Queen of hearts. We break out. I decided just to go for it. I jam all in. Thinking that if he has a one pair hand, he's going to have a real hard time calling. My hand looks like it's two pair or better. Anyway, he goes into the tank and I'm just praying he doesn't call. Because he has about $350 behind. And... I just stuffed it all in there. This is going to be a really ugly day if he calls. Please, please, please fold. It's okay. You can let it go. Just let it go. Oh, no. I think he's going to call. He looks over at me. I think he's going to call. Oh, no. He let it go. Yay! All right, four hours into our session, we're down about 900 bucks. We looked down at 6-4 suited, decided it was good enough for a raise, opened to 15. Ended up getting five callers. Yes, five callers for the 15. So if I hit something sneaky on this hand, I think I'm going to win a huge pot. So here we go, six ways to a flop, 93 in. Flop comes out, ace high with two spades. Okay, it's checked to me. I got a flush draw again. 
Haven't hit one yet. This might be my time. I lead out for $20. A small bet because I kind of want to build a pot and yet not get priced out if someone comes over the top. I end up getting one caller. So, hey, not too bad. Got it down to heads up. It's like 50-50 to me, right? Turn card comes is a king of spades. Yes, I make my flush, finally. My opponent has about $300 behind, so I'm trying to set up a river jam that he would definitely want to call. So I bet $80 here into the pot. If he calls, that makes a $300 pot, and he has about $220, $230-ish behind. He does end up putting in the call, so we got a $300 pot. Looking for no spade on the river, just a complete blank would be fine. And they put up a king of clubs. Well, that's a pretty good card. I don't think he filled up here. I jam for about 230 effective, and he snap calls right away with pocket tens. I finally make a flush, and the guy shows me a full house on the river. Ouch. All right, we're down about 1250 now. Things are not going well. I look at 6-5 suited and defend from the small blind. We go five weights to a flop of jack 5-3. So we got second pair and some backdoor straight draw. I check, player leads for 30. It's folded to the player in the cutoff who puts in the call for the 30. I'm a little concerned that he might have a flush draw and I am here with a pair of fives, but I think I'm gonna still get the right price for this. Take one off for $30. See if we can pick up something like a six or a five or maybe some sort of draw. Turn card comes as a four diamonds. So now we got second pair open-ended. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be getting away from this. I check it. The player bets $60. Very fair price, especially when the player on the cutoff also calls. As I said, if it comes to spade, I'm going to be really scared of the player in the cutoff. But with a pair and an open-end straight draw, I'm not going anywhere. Maybe it's time for me to make an actual draw and have it hold up. So I put in the call and we get to see a river card of a three of diamonds. Yeah, in some spots I would try to barrel off, trying to get someone off a of jack, but not in this particular spot with a player behind. Yeah, I just check, I give up, they roll over ace, jack of hearts, and that's it for me today. I'm tapping out. The combination of playing poorly and running a little bit subpar has definitely cost me today. End up losing $1,400. Uh, basically half of that is from just really, really stupid plays. So I probably should have lost maybe five or $600 today with the way the cards ran. But uh, yeah, I lost a lot more. Anyway, in case you guys are wondering why you haven't heard from Zeus so far today, well, he took the day off because it is his birthday, but I prepared a little thing, a little special a celebration for him at the end of the video. So if you made it this far, hang on for another minute or so and you get the, your Zeus fix in full. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Really do appreciate you supporting the vlog. And until next time, good luck at the tables.